Alright guys, welcome to another beer review. Got something uh, really quite different actually today. And I didn't actually know about this style until today. Um, I was swapping in Beretta just to take a few bottles and cans back. And um, yeah, just to pick up a can for the Beaver Town uh, re live review that should already be uploaded and recorded by the time you see this. And uh, I thought I'd pick up like one or two beers as well. And one that I picked up was a collaboration between Fry Guys Beer Couture, Sebastian Sauer, and uh, Crow Brewery, a brewery out of Serbia, I believe. So, yeah, really like micro nano level brewing, um, I believe, from my small research. And this is a. A Kvass beer, or Kvass, or Quas, and the beer is called Quasimodo, so uh, yeah, basically this is like, um, like an Eastern European Russian sort of drink, which you find more in a non-alcoholic form, and it's a drink using bread, actual bread, like fermenting bread. I'm not sure about the technical processes. There is a lengthy Wikipedia page about this beer style. And uh, yeah, but it is commonly a non-alcoholic beer and it's sometimes flavoured. Well, not non-alcoholic beer, but a non-alcoholic beverage. And it's sometimes flavoured with fruits. So it's one of these, um, you know, ancient traditional recipes. And Sebastian prides himself on brewing these sort of lost types of alcoholic beverage and taking twists on contemporary ones and breaking from the shackles of the Reinheitsgebot. So uh, yeah, some really intriguing brewing. And I've covered a few of his beers so far. A lot of them have been collaborations, so his playlist will be down below. And uh, yeah, this is a 4.5% ABV beer using water, barley malt, rye malt, cherries, rye bread, hops, and yeast. So I'm expecting this to be a little bit hearty. And uh, yeah, fantastic artwork. Definitely looks the part. So I don't think I've actually had any alcoholic beverages from Serbia. So this will be interesting. And as I've mentioned before, I'm a massive fan of what Sebastian is doing over at Fry Guy Spear Tour. And, uh, yeah, oh god, that's an intriguing colour already. So I've got like a reddy brownie hint to it as it's pouring into the glass. So, beer in a glass, and, uh, yeah, that does look like a soda, almost like a, a cola, maybe. And when you hold it up to the light, you get really vibrant ruby red hues. But it's sort of like this dirty, dark brown, reddy sort of beer. And, uh, yeah, quite murky as well. You really can't see through that at all. Beer didn't really pour with the head either. But, um, yeah, that doesn't really look like a beer. It just looks like one of these, like, fruity, malty beverages. So when we eventually do create a head, it's got a lovely sort of pinkish, browny hue to it. So you can definitely get the cherries. And it does have the cherries, uh, or the impression of cherries in the appearance. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Very intriguing to look at. Let's see what it smells like. Yeah, you definitely get that fermented bread sort of sourness there. And that's lifted with this lovely cherry note. There's like a sort of slight vinegary sourness to this as well. Definitely pick up those malts. That rye is really evident. And it's got a lovely, subtle spiciness to it. I don't know, it's like one of those beers that you probably want to, wouldn't want to smell for too long because it could get a little bit unpleasant. And it is a rather acquired taste. So I take one sit, sniff and I like it, and then I take another sniff and I'm like, this is a bit strange. But yeah, you definitely get that fermented character. So, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers.
yeah, you get that fermented flavour in there. And it's almost got like a sort of wine flavour as well, like a slightly vinegary red wine. You get this sickly sweet cherry fruitness though, with a little bit of the sourness you get from a natural fruit. And you do definitely get that rye bread in there as well. Considering it is made with a rye bread and actually you know, using bread in the beer, it's got a remarkably light body to it. Uh, it finishes a little bit watery on the back end. I don't know about this one, guys. If you like your sour beers, you know, it's got that sort of quality to it. It leaves you with a quite weird um, bitterness on the back end. Yeah, this is one of those ones where it's very much an acquired taste because I'm not going to lie, I'd never bullshit in my reviews. Not the biggest fan of this. It's not really appealing to me. But it is drinkable, it's serviceable, it's by no means a drain pour. But that being said, some people will taste this and they will spit it out. They won't like it at all. If you don't like really strong fermented flavours, then you're definitely not going to like this one. Slightly vinegary. You do get that slight red wine flavour in there as well. Yeah, it's got that... I know it's down to the style, but it tastes like it's off, if that makes sense. Really quite sour now that I'm talking. It makes it finishes dry as well, so it makes you salivate. But um, yeah, an intriguing beer for sure. Am I completely sold on it? Not really. Um, would I go out my way to try more of this style? Maybe, just out of curiosity's sake. But I think that's it comes with the territory with uh, a brewery like Frygeist Beer Culture. Sebastian is so experimental. He's done so many different styles, unique twists on styles. He's worked with so many people around the world. And it is so unique. And the fact that he is so... What's the word? He produces so much beer. By rule of thumb, you're not going to love every beer that's produced. Prolific, that's the word I'm looking for. But that being said, to me, this doesn't really work for my palate. So if I was to score it, I'd give it probably a 4 out of 10. Just because it's not for me. It's not bad. It's not anything like that. There's no faults with it. It's just not a style for me. But that being said, someone could review this, and this is like a 10 out of 10 mind-blowing taste sensation. But as it stands, um, not a fan of this one, I'm afraid. But I could list you countless beers that I've had, uh, that I've had uh, Sebastian involved, that I would praise and urge you to buy. So, uh, yeah, if you want something different and unique, give this one a try. And if you like your fermented flavours, if you like your sour beers, if you sort of like that vinegary wine-esque flavour in there, definitely pick this up as well. There is a lovely rye, like, spicy note in there. And those cherries do help make the beer a little bit more palatable. But all in all, it's really not for me, but please do not misconstrue me as saying that this is an awful beer. It's one you should try if you ever get the opportunity to. I know um, a lot of the beers brewed by Frygeist are available in the US through the Shelton Brothers. So if you come across it and you want something unique, you want an interesting beer review to upload, give this one a try. But if you want something that you're going to really enjoy drinking and sitting back, then you might want to leave this one alone. So it's like a bready, sort of slight sour Ribena. That's what I'm going to summarise this beer as. So, um, yeah, 4 out of 10. Check out both breweries down below. It's definitely put 
uh, the Crow Brewery on my radar. And uh, yeah, I'll always be picking up beers from Fry Guy Spearkle Tour just because I love the experimental nature of his brewing. So uh, yeah, check out my Fry Geist playlist down below for some more solid beers that I've actually enjoyed. And if anybody else has reviewed this on YouTube, their reviews will be in the description box also. Check out Beretta if you ever find yourself in Bavaria, especially Regensburg. Stop by, great selection. And um, yeah, they can't all be winners, but that's the nature of the beast, I suppose. Thank you guys for watching, and I shall see thee later.